Welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Avermedia Live Gamer Portable. Now I did do a little bit of an unboxing and talk briefly about this back in the mailbag episode in which I had received it. However, I decided to do a full length episode on it because it is a pretty interesting device and there's some things I wanted to point out about it. So first off, we'll take a look at this. Now what this is, uh, it's a portable capture device you use this to capture the audio and video off of either a, a console gaming system like Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, 4, so on and so forth, or PC. My particular usage is I'm going to use this to do tutorial work on the PC and maybe do some light gaming, let's plays, stuff like that, perhaps on another channel as I've alluded to in the past, but mainly for the sake of doing tutorials, brief how-tos, things like that on this particular channel. Now, a quick note on that. Yes, I know you can do that kind of stuff through software. Maybe uh, doing tutorials might actually be easier in software, but the thing about hardware is it's kind of always on. If I wanted to show something in BIOS or another part of the computer where we're not running Windows, this is how I'm gonna do it because this is gonna capture whatever the screen sees. Also, it is portable as the name implies. So you can actually put an SD card in here and take this with you and record on the go. So that's nice for different things like, hey, you are into gaming and you know you wanna go play with your friend or someplace and you wanna record it, and that's what you would use this for. So maybe for my use, it's a little bit overkill, but it would allow me to do things down the road. Uh, now, I, I will mention that there is a Live Gamer Portable 2 which recently came out. And so far, the only difference I can see is that one records 1080p 60, where this records 1080p 30. And a note about that, uh, I don't have a 1080p monitor hooked up to my computer. The only 1080p device I have in my entire house is my wife's TV in the living room. I'm gonna be recording most of my stuff in 1360 by 768, which is what my main monitor records. I can actually record a higher frame rate, I believe it's 50p, with that than I would with 19, uh, with, the, uh, with the 1080p. So, you know, you're gonna wanna pick a device based upon your exact usage. For me, this is what fit the bill. Uh, I did look at a hot pog device. It was the HD PBR, which is very similar in a lot of ways. Um, there were some things about the other one I liked, maybe a little bit more than this one, but at the end of the day, based on reviews and everything else, I did decide on this particular device. However, uh, I did a quick search right before I did this video, and it does seem that you can pick up um, one of the other devices fairly cheap, so maybe in the future I'll do one of those as a comparison and see if my decision was worthwhile. But taking a look at this device, you can see there's a switch in the bottom to go between PC and PC free mode. And once you switch that, it does take a few moments for the uh, unit to reinitialize itself to, to put itself into that configuration. Uh, it is important to note that there are certain things you can do in PC mode that you cannot do in PC free mode. And I'll get into that in a few moments. Uh, there's that SD slot. Now this is an SDHC card slot and you wanna make sure it's at least a class 10. On the back side here, you have AV in, which is what you're going to use for component video. Uh, and there's also a left and right uh, RCA audio connection here too that you can utilize. This is obviously just order, HDMI in and out. Now this does video and sound. And then you have your audio in and out and this is exactly what it sounds like it is. So if you're using an external sound device and you can't stream it through the HDMI connection, you're gonna use this instead. And then you'll connect either your headphones or your speaker system directly to this. One of the things you can do with this on PC mode that you can't do on PC free mode is you can actually plug a microphone directly into your computer and record audio that way. The Hawpog device actually had a microphone port directly on it. And that was the one thing about that I liked a little better. Uh, on the bottom you see there's just some brief specs about it, but this is actually a rubberized coating, so once it's down, it, it sticks pretty good, which is nice. And then you have this soft button here. In fact, here, click. This will light up blue when it's in standby mode, and when it's recording, it will flash red. And uh, if you switch this over to PC free mode without an SD card, it actually just lights up red. You can't do anything. Take a quick look at the box here. You can see there is a lot of Chinese writing on this. I did buy from eBay from someone here in the States for $139 of free shipping. I'll put a link to the seller in the description. And I'll mention too while I'm here, it comes with a three month pre
premium membership to XSplit, and XSplit is basically the encoding software that will take the stream from this, encode it, and upload it to the net for live streaming. So that's something I will eventually need once I'm ready to go live. And also worth mentioning in the box is a little sleeve, which is nice. It's kind of like a neoprene material. As you can just load that in there and throw it in your pocket. And taking a look at the cabling, they give you a pretty good selection here. Of course, you get the USB cable to power the device. I'll, I'll mention, since I have this in my hand, that you need five volt, one amp supply to power this. So if you're using a brick or maybe a um, battery pack or anything like that, if you're going portable, that's the thing to note. You get this really nice uh, long cable which goes between the PlayStation 3, I believe, and the actual device itself. Uh, for people who use the PlayStation system will recognize this connector. This goes all the way back to PlayStation 1. Uh, however, I understand you can't get component output on PlayStation 1. You can only get composite. However, you can do component on PlayStation 2. So one of the things in this video, we're gonna actually test that. They don't mention anything about PlayStation 2 support, but then again, it's kind of an old system, so I could see that they wouldn't. Um, but they do mention Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and Wii U as being compatible systems that it works with. Um, and important to note, you cannot do HDCP uh, copying on this. If you have a device that has that, you have to either disable it if possible or you won't be able to record at all. Uh, you get one of these breakout cables. Now this is for converting this little connection here to component. So you're getting the three connections for video and then two connections for audio. You can also use the audio here as an input. So that gives you three options, either audio through a 3.5 millimeter cable, through the USB, uh, through, I'm sorry, through the HDMI connection or through the RCA connection here. Uh, and then of course they gave you a length of 3.5 millimeter wire to do that. And they also gave you a short piece of HDMI to go from your TV to the output of the LGP. Um, one thing I will mention since I have this in my hand, since they gave you such a nice long length of the PlayStation style cable, it would have been nice to see a little bit of a longer HDMI cable, but I'm not complaining. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the specs up on the screen. Uh, you could see that there are definitely a lot more recording options with going through the PC as opposed to PC free. Uh, however, when Mentioning PC versus PC free, the only difference is, is PC free is just recording directly to the device using X, the uh, SD card. Going um, PC mode, you can obviously record directly to a PC. So if you had a computer system in the same room that you have your PlayStation or Xbox or whatever, you're going to connect that device directly to the capture device and then connect that to the computer if you want those options. Uh, likewise, you can record a computer on PC free mode. So you don't have to record right back to its own device. Although it seems like out of the options, it's definitely better to go directly to the PC instead of actually to the device itself. All right, it's time to actually get this all hooked up and show you what it does. Now we have a couple HDMI cables over here. This is uh, about a three foot section of cable that goes directly up to the TV. And I have this already hooked up for purposes of testing other devices. So I just hook this up to that device and then switch the input on the TV. Whereas this one was hooked up to the TV and this is the uh, HDMI in this end, DVI end on the other, and that's the video feed from my computer. So since I already have these, it makes it nice and easy. We're just gonna take this and hook it to the in and then take this and hook it to the out. Make sure this is on PC mode, switched over this way. And then the last cable over here is again, another USB cable that I already had on my desk here for charging things and whatnot. And this is actually a nice long cable that goes to the back of the computer. So this will give me some leeway here. But once I actually plug this in the right way, you'll see, you'll get this little bit of a swirling thing going on and then it comes up full blue and that lets you know it's connected. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pitch this camera up and show you I have a separate sound system. None of the audio actually comes from the TV. And that audio system is hooked up to an internal sound card, not the onboard sound. However, it's a, a Creative Labs card. So I'm actually gonna kill this light here. And the computer is currently on. If I move my mouse, 
And uh, yeah, as you can see, I had a, a website pulled up for the hop hog stuff. Uh, now, that of course is exactly what you see. Whatever is on my screen is what this device will certainly record, which is pretty nice. And all I gotta do is push that little button, if you see. The Avermedia software comes up, and this is Rec Central, by the way. And Rec Central is what you're going to use to set the actual program here. And uh, I know this sounds kind of counterintuitive, but I'm just going to show you this on camera now. And in just a moment, we'll switch over to the actual feed here that you're getting. But there's a wizard mode, advanced, so on and so forth. But basically, and I'll show you with this obviously on capture, but basically you set up all of your different settings on here. Once you hit ready, uh, it'll ask you if you want to save, you hit okay, yep. And then this actually puts that into standby mode. And in fact, if I zoom out just a second and show you in my taskbar here, you can see the little rec central red kind of ring right there. And that'll let you know that you are primed and pretty much ready to go. And that's it. And all you got to do at that point is just get into whatever program you want to record and then you just hit that little button and I'll just demonstrate that and you can see it's recording now. So whatever I do with my computer, it's going to obviously record and then you push it again, it stops and that's it. And I have it set to put this in my video folder and down towards the bottom over here you could see this is our little clip, our little five second clip that we made. That's it, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna go ahead now and plug my microphone into this computer and we'll switch over to that view. Okay, and here we are in the desktop. And I have to actually have headphones on because the microphone is playing directly back into the speaker system and you get feedback. Now there is a way you can actually shut off the sound coming from the microphone to the speakers, but that varies based on device. On my particular system, I can, but for simplicity, I just threw some headphones on. Uh, and also that will allow me to monitor my levels based upon what I'm playing. So hopefully I can go into Rec Central here while it's running. I have a feeling I can't, nope. Um, but I did want to mention in there, perhaps I'll show you in camera view, that you can actually set where the audio comes from for the stream, uh, both microphone wise and also audio wise. You can actually have it capture the audio directly from the set the system itself, directly from the desktop without having to worry about running a cable to the sound card. Uh, the other thing you can do is, is most video devices, even with this DVI connection, you can actually take the audio from the uh, video device and actually just install a driver so it's like HDMI audio and you'd have to go into your computer here and uh, change which device you want. Now you can see there's the Aver Avermedia HD Intel Display Audio. So that's actually the Avermedia first listing there is the device itself and the Intel Display Audio is the actual driver running on the internal video card here in, in the computer. Now normally uh, I'd be using my 9800 GT, my uh, kind of obsolete video card, but the thing's decided to not run as well for me lately, so I've actually gone back to just using the uh, onboard video card, which this does work with. However, when I was playing with this when I first got it, I had a problem with Unreal Tournament uh, 1 and 2004. Uh, they both worked fine and then w with the video card. Then when I took it out, went to the stock card, I had some issues with it although they still worked and then they just stopped working completely in the middle of the game, especially with uh, Unreal 2004, you'd get some errors. So that wasn't fun, uh, but I can show you some other games on here as well, uh, particularly some of my favorites, uh, like uh, using ZSNES here, which is, of course, a SNES simulator. Now, I will mention you may actually have to go in and adjust the audio level of whatever program you're listening to um, because it will actually swamp out the audio from the microphone. Now, this may be actually just the thing on my particular system, the fact I'm using a camera mic, I don't actually have like a nice desk mic here or anything like that. It's very well possible. Uh, as I play with this thing, I'll definitely discover the best way to do it before I start actually using it for streaming or anything like that. But for now, I'll just lower down the audio level here and we can play one of my favorite games or at least show you some footage of it just to show you how this thing actually works. 
Um, now, it seems that the recording quality is going to depend on the input quality. So uh, I think I have this set to record whatever the native resolution of the monitor is. However, I did notice uh, there's no upscaling they mentioned. So if you're looking at something in a, in a lower resolution, it's not going to upscale to a higher resolution. So that's something definitely important to remember. But yeah, this is actually a, a new a new game I started fairly recently. And uh, I'm not going to play this forever, but I just want to get you an idea just to show you exactly what this looks like. And it's, it's nice because, you know, if I want, I can just uh, hit a button here and I can control, or I should say Alt and Tab, uh, and go, you know, directly into something else if I want. And the device is recording the whole time. Now, this is set to, with a hockey, if I hit F7, it'll automatically start and stop recording. So you can actually get into whatever application you want and start recording and then stop it when you don't want and in a particular situation like playing Zelda here it's pretty cool because I was uh, trying to record my f the footage of me playing the game and getting through the dungeons and if I died what I would do is just stop recording and then when I got all the way back to the entrance of the dungeon to start I would just start recording again so I have all those little snippets of the actual dungeons and uh, let's just see, I'll try opening up another, like a higher end game here and see what it looks like. Let's give Grid a try, I have a feeling that may work. It's just an Xbox 360 controller and a USB lead on the end of it. Uh, and I will mention too, this is the Intel Core i7-4790 on this particular machine. It's actually a 4790K, which means it's unlocked. And I'm running at 4.4 gigahertz uh, and 16 gigs of RAM. However, no video card. So uh, actually, I'll just back up here and go to race day and just well, just a quick race here just to show you what this looks like. Uh, and what you're seeing now is actually be recording in uh, 1024 by 768 because that was the closest thing to the actual resolution of this monitor. And full disclosure, I suck at racing games, but I absolutely love playing them. It's a, a lot of fun. So if you see me mess up badly, don't don't hold it against me for sure but you get the idea how this looks uh, everything's nice and smooth uh, of course I don't see any lag here playing it live in playback however there may be some depending on the actual recording method used and uh, depending on what frame rate you have and I'm gonna crash here but depending on what frame rate you're using everything like that you can get the idea that you, your results will vary. Of course, if you have a really nice high-end system and you're playing 1080p and the whole nine yards, and you have a nice monitor and everything else, it's going to look great. And, but it still only comes down to the recording quality and what you actually set all the settings to. And uh, I definitely have to show you those settings at, on a different view here. But uh, I'm going to uh, exit out of this now, actually, and uh, I'll show you one other thing. And I, I'm going to actually go out into my living room and grab my PlayStation 2, because I, I want to try to see if this actually works. Now, I went and grabbed my PlayStation 2, and as one could imagine, it did hook up perfectly. Now, this is the one situation where that long wire is too long, but you may notice there's a little bit of an issue here um so the picture and the sound comes out of this and goes into this av input and then this hdmi goes up to the tv but next to this was the hdmi in from the computer and when you switch the rec central software from recording this pc to a console you lose the feed from your monitor so then you just completely lose everything you see so you have to either reconnect this hdmi here back to the TV, or in my situation, I ended up actually uh, using the HDMI output on the computer directly to this, and then the DVI output goes up to the monitor. That way I can switch back and forth using the TV's remote between the different inputs on what I'm seeing. So now in this situation, if I pan up here on the camera, I'll, I'll actually show you that you'll see it says no signal because the PlayStation is off. However, if I turn it on, you'll see it will start to uh, actually change over to the, the proper signal here. Uh, and it's nice that you can actually view it like this through the application, but you can also switch the TV over to that HDMI output and go full screen if you want. 
um, as you will see in a moment. Now, I mentioned my TV does take a few minutes to switch channels over, but and there you go. Um, so I, I was seeing this and I wasn't seeing my desktop because of the way the HDMI switched over. So you can go back to this and uh, this is how you're actually going to you know, do the actual recording. Um, you'll probably have your console and everything hooked up to your TV and then this will just hook in between it. And let's say you're using a laptop and you're going through PC mode on a laptop, you'll connect your laptop next to your TV to the LGP and record it that way. Um, it seems like a, a kind of a convoluted way to do it, but you, you could just go portable and throw the SD card in it, then you don't have to worry about the computer at all, but you won't be able to record any commentary. So um, with that, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I would switch over and plug the microphone back into the LGP and the computer and, and show you the footage, but there, there really isn't any reason for it. Uh, you get the idea. It works perfectly. Um, you're not hearing any sound, of course, because that stream is going to the recording and it's not playing through the uh, speaker system here. Um, but what I, what I actually want to do is close out of this and show you the Rec Central software. Um, now, this is the one thing you actually cannot record with the screen capture software because this minimizes to the system tray and won't allow you to open it to record it. So unfortunately I got to do the old fashioned camera method here. But it shows you here your, your configuration. You can actually set various different configurations which is really cool and as I play with this I will do that. And then you have these different modes. I recommend the advanced mode because it just lays everything out here. But you can see different things like uh, what platform you're recording from, what the source is, and this will change. So if I go to current PC you can see some of the options here change a little bit, like what microphone I'm recording from. Um, this is the capture device is actually what source the audio is coming from. And then um, you can actually record system sound. So that's what I had it set to originally for the PC was system sound. And then uh, it's just the Avermedia desktop audio capture. So it's going to record whatever the PC is hearing. If you want, you can actually switch this up and use the capture device instead and then set it to audio in or HDMI and then either install like I said before the driver for HDMI audio or run the um, audio cable right directly to your sound card and do it that way. Um, but so far using system sound seems like it's worked well for me. And then of course as I mentioned you have the microphone options you can sit here and set that. And what's cool is you actually use the digital input on my um, sound blaster here to input audio to via microphone so that's always another way to do things um, especially with like a PlayStation where you have uh, audio out coming out of the uh, optical connection and then you can set different things over here like the video format and bit rate and all that stuff and if you see if I set this to 1920 by 1080 the video bit rate can be set to a maximum of 12 megabits per second uh, audio bit rate goes all the way up to 256 kilobits per second and frame rate we have set to 30. Um, it can go 15, 20, 24, 25, and 30. However, if I lower this down to 1360 by 768, you can see we actually go up to 50. And I think if I go all the way down to um, 640 by 480, I can even go up to 60. So yeah, you know, it depends on what you're recording, uh, what kind of mileage you'll get out of this. Now there you go, 1080, I should say 1024 by 768 at 60 frames per second. Um, for everyday, normal, not widescreen PC usage, um, that's going to be a perfect recording rate for me. Um, in fact, I, you know, you can go all the way up to 60 megabits a second if you want on that particular um, setting. So you can see definitely what I mean by that. All these are dependent on what you're recording at. And then you have a uh, other PC, and which of course you can't do system sound on other PC so you have to get it from one of the external devices here uh, again I think of like you're recording your gaming system with your laptop you know that's what you would use that for and then obviously when you click gaming console um, it gives you even more uh, options other PC and gaming console are pretty much the same and when you go to set uh, either the HDMI or component you can actually go in here and change the brightness and contrast um, at least with component. With HDMI, I think that's what allows you to set. Um, you, know, you have different color arrangements like um, 
This is the range from zero to 255 or 16 to 255. And it doesn't make any difference here, but when you're actually looking at the output video from this, you'll see that it does make a difference. Perhaps maybe uh, I can switch my monitor over here and show that. And we can see we're actually viewing the output of the LGP up to the TV and setting that does change the color. Those uh, extra 16 steps there seem like they really make a difference as far as um, range of color. So I'll leave it on that mode for sure. And well, that's pretty much it for this piece of software. It's pretty self-explanatory once you start using it. You just gotta make sure you have the right input and outputs set on there obviously and where you want it to, to save to. And you should be good to go. Now, I, I have to mention the best way to actually record your own PC to the own PC, like I'm doing here, is to use two cables, one going to the TV and one going to the LGP. And in this situation, I have a third one going from the LGP also to the TV. Um, the reason is, is because, like right now, if I switch this over to game console and then I hit component, boof, I lose everything because I'm on the output, you know, there's there's that game we were looking at before. So if I actually go up to my TV and change it to the other HDMI input, I can go back to what the PC is viewing. And uh, you can only really do that if you have both outputs going to the device, you know, or one output to the device and one to the TV, so you can switch back and forth between the two. Maybe that's not gonna be used by everybody, but in my particular situation, that's how I had to do it. Um, and I also did play with hooking up the sound output from the sound card to the LGP and then from that to the to the speaker system or from that to the uh, speak uh, to the uh, headphones but I found that recording uh, from the desktop was actually a lot better um, I should point this out too in my sound blaster software I actually had to turn off surround sound it the recording came out a lot better audio wise that way and also in the mixer here, I have the microphone, at least my microphone, turned up all the way with uh, boost also on. Now you're not seeing that listed here because it's not plugged in, but keep, keep wary of that. You may have to adjust all the settings a little differently depending on your particular devices. Um, the other two pieces of software that came with this device is the uh, PC Free Utility which is basically just a quick settings program which allows you to set exactly what format you want to record to. And once you hit OK, it saves this to the actual device and then when you hit the record button on it, wherever you are, plugged into whatever device, it will record in those settings. So that's pretty nice that they have that on there. And then the last one is actually used for the XSplit software. And this is what you would use here to actually take the stream from this device and translate it to the actual other program to stream over the internet. That's all very new thing to me. I have to actually play around with that. Um, from what I gather though, once you click the live button on YouTube at the very least, you, you are live just like that. So whatever feed you're, you're getting, you, you would obviously be automatically uploading. So I have to, uh, I have to actually see how that all works and, and play with it. But that's really all I have for this particular video. Uh, if you have any questions about the LGP, drop it in the comments below. I'll try my best to help you out based upon my own use of it. Um, certainly there's a lot of other reviews of this thing and a lot of them are hardcore gamers that are using it specifically for that task. So if I didn't cover on anything that they may have, I apologize, but like I said, I'm using it for specific reasons. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber to this channel, if you click the top left corner where I have my little Circle P logo, you can subscribe to this channel. That helps me grow. Also, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It helps me grow as well. Um, and don't forget to share this with your friends if you found it useful. And uh, check out the other videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next one.